Aaron Wugume. On 106.1 Next Radio. 106.1 Next Radio, this is The Big Talk. I'm Kanre Mgume and welcome all of you listening in Uganda and around the world. And uh, this is a conversation we've been having for uh, since last week, actually, um, right from Monday last week to, to date. Today, there was a win for the protesters, at least, uh, that were arrested a week ago, exactly seven days ago, um, when four out of five that were arraigned in court were given bail. Um, uh, that uh, include uh, Pfizer, B. Wall, Edgar, uh, together with uh, Thomas uh, Kanzia. So today we're looking at uh, the March to Parliament protests. Uh, young people and now medical interns have also joined in us saying that uh, we probably should march the hospitals, we should march to Parliament. They're not relenting. The question we are asking tonight on these protests, will government meet the demands? Will they heed uh, to the pressure of the young protesters uh, now that uh, everyone, including young and old, say they have legitimate concerns. In the studios tonight, I am joined by lawyer and also youth activist Godwin Toko. Good to have you on the show for the first time. Thank you, Kanari. You want to come close to the mic? No, no, you don't have to put okay. those on. Thank you, Kanari. Glad yeah. to be here. I'm also joined by uh, the spokesperson of the NRM caucus, uh, Honorable Brandon Chinto. Good to have you on the show, Honorable. Pleasure is mine always. Good in. Um, what were your feelings today after some of uh, your colleagues uh, did uh, secure some bail, four out of five? Um, wasn't that a sigh of relief today? Just give us a wrap of um, how you felt about the day. So I, four out of five is fairly good, uh, mm. but it's always uh, wrong that there's someone going back to jail. You, you have to think about that other person. You know that, that story in the Bible where Jesus says that if you have 99 sheep and one is lost, Mm. You know, the, 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 the good shepherd will take care of that one and sacrifice whatever there is to get that particular sheep that is lost. Yeah, but I'm glad that um, the four people are out. Uh, those who are part of the poor arrested on Tuesday. I must remind the listeners that they were arrested in the basement of a, of a, of, of a, of, of a car parking lot mm. where they were just having placards and writing on them that end corruption in Uganda and stuff like that. They were not outside. They were not protesting. Mm. They didn't distract any property. None of them was caught with a gun, nothing. So they were arrested in the basement for having placards in the basement writing on them. And charged with idle and disorderly, uh, which I now understand that the charges were amended to uh, uh, so public nuisance. It was both. It was uh, being idle and disorderly and then being a common nuisance. So they dropped mm. the one of being idle and disorderly. Um, and maintain and they, the one for common uses. Yeah, that's, that, which is now the charge that everyone that are, was arrested in relation to the protest has been charged with, except for the three guys that were picked up at Eliana, hmm. who were charged with illegal assembly. Right. Yeah, that's the, the situation with the guys today. Let's talk about A5. Uh, the, their colleague, uh, Aljab Mosinguzi, who uh, did not manage to secure bail, uh, we, we, what was his situation? It's, it's quite complicated. First, I know um, that he doesn't want to be talked about. Uh, if you notice, he was in court the whole time. He had a mask on. He allow his photos yeah. taken. Mm. Um, I'm told that even when he was visited in prison, he didn't allow people to, to see him as the rest. But his situation is quite peculiar because he, he was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was in the basement with his guys. They were not known to him. They had never met. He was not. But he had not planned to protest whatsoever. But he was picked up. Yeah. But um, the, the, the team at Chapter Four is going to work hard to get him out. So we just have to give it time. I, I respect his privacy as far as that is concerned because it seems to show that there should be respect of his privacy. I don't want to talk beyond that. So let's just give it time and see how it unfolds. should respect his privacy, uh, but now that he's been rounded up and, and you know, uh, with the others, um, pressed on the same charges, uh, maybe it's uh, worth talking about. I Yeah, for me, I would. But then, uh, like I said, it's up to him. <laughs> even, even people who, are, who, are, who have been rounded up and all that still have their right to privacy. Yeah. So as far as he doesn't want his face out there, I imagine he doesn't want as much information out there Mm. As of now, mm. probably that will change in the coming days. Probably it won't. But for now, I guess we just have to, to leave it to him um, to decide what he will do. So we give it a few days. Like I said, the team at Chapter 4 mm. is working uh, tirelessly to ensure that he gets his freedom. He regains his freedom that was wrongly and illegally taken away from him. Mm. And I hope they will succeed. Thanks for the update. Honorable Brown and Chinto, it's been a week, it's been seven days um, of uh, March to Parliament. More than 100 people have been detained. Uh, I think now we're counting 15 that have secured bail. So far, more than that. Uh, yesterday there were 14. 14 plus, plus 4 today. today. That's 18. 18. That's minus the three were arrest, arrested at Iliana. So if you add the three, it's quite. Yeah, the, the, the success is here and there. So you're yeah. looking at about 20 something people out now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll today discuss the small wins um, from your perspective. Honorable Brown, it's been seven days of the March to Parliament movement online and on the streets. More than 100 arrested, uh, close to 20 now given bail. 
Uh, the things unfolding uh, before your eyes as a politician uh, who sits in parliament that uh, the young protesters want to march to, what, what, what's your two cents? Uh, first of all, it's very unfortunate. And we as young parliamentarians, new legislators, we don't support it. And we condemn. You know, I sit on the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs. We have the chair and us members actually have a notes of meeting, in in-house meeting tomorrow. We have summoned the IGP so that we can prepare mm. a statement. Okay, that's, that's the information. Because people have rights to demonstrate. You can say they didn't write, you can say, I don't know when you last came to Parliament, but yesterday it's extremely tight that even in the clerk passed the notes, we should not really have visitors here. So you expect me to go to Cafe Java House when I have an office in the building. Today I was... What, 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 are, what is the leadership of Parliament afraid of? Young protesters yeah, well, confronting them? Well, we have been... Actually, the fear that I also support was that no one will stop. Because you remember, there are some protesters that first came led by a certain group. They were protesting against the honor of such mm. And those guys entered without anything. Mm. They were even protected to speak to the, to, the, to the journalists. And then the sergeant at arms told them, you go back and bring your petition. They so did. And moreover, the person who was leading people from Remiaga, he comes from Zitgomba, a totally very different district. Now, that's also politics. But for now, why? You remember somewhere last year when we had bombs along Parliamentary Avenue. And to me, I look at it this way. It's wrong, the massive use of force to arrest these young men who did not even have stones, they only had blacks. And we also, as government, was very mindful that these people, as they march all together, somebody, Canada with bad intentions, can come in. They can kill these young people or advance to, to parliament when they don't know, because this is an advantage. Mm. And who will answer? The government will be put at question. So they were simply, and I want to, to, to have an opportunity because I love the energy of young people. And the issues they are raising, they are serious issues. So they are demanding. Maybe their members of parliament are not giving them effective information. And it's a role, Article 1 of the Constitution, power belongs to the people. So if they are demanding an explanation, the other way would be how can they do it and what's the contribution of government. Mm. So we would want to have answers from the IGP, and then probably we can find ways to make sure that. So it's very important, I'm glad, when council says many of them, I have been down in my constituents, I have not been updated, that many of them are coming. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, play, we prayed for as members of parliament. Mm -hmm. And then we also questioned these young men. They are doing a good gesture. But the problem, you would not know who are they, who is organizing. Probably some of us would go and speak to them. Hey, look here, this is very nice, very important. Do you have the petition? And put spirited fight to see that they are right and the voice is heard. Because if Parliament, if Parliament voice is not heard and the public, in the public eyes, Canada, I won't tell you that we look so ugly as an institution. Yeah. So they have the right to demand. You raise an important point, which I think that uh, should form our next conversation. Uh, you talk about uh, leadership of the young protesters, but you also talk about clarity of issues. Mm -hmm. What they're protesting against is uh, a problem that has been on for the last close to 40 years, which is corruption. What more do you need them to say? Now, first of all, this is an institution that has laws that govern it. And I also told you what happened. That time there was no one protesting, and they almost hit parliament. You were here. And you saw the security that was mounted. We're saying at least you don't cover in that. If these guys were rooted well by the security agencies, that's police. But police was just there to, pre to, to, to prevent them because they didn't know what kind of people. So I'm not saying the points are not justified. But if we would talk, probably we can add on. You can protest in so many, so many ways. And then you bring your petition. There are people who are concerned. You can say, I'm going to human rights. I can go to parliament. I specifically you can even uh, put a task, the speaker, if they know the committee that is supposed to handle that. Mm. And then they have proper direction. So the issue is done. We have family. We have 
poverty. Do we round it in the same way? That's why in the NRM we have different programs to attack poverty. So I'm not saying that clarity wasn't there. I mean, it was an issue that even somebody in heaven can know that there is corruption. And it's a disease we are trying to fight. And I want to thank them because they have supplemented. We should also go as members of parliament, because corruption is not only at parliament, mm. do our oversight. Godwin, do you want to respond to that? Uh, Honorable Brandon Chinto says there was no clarity of uh, the demands. Uh, the, 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 that, that perhaps there should have been a, a petition and and may be presented to Parliament and it is responded to. Yeah, I guess I guess the people are not given that opportunity because I know that uh, these guys wrote to the police mm. uh, as the law requires them to. Uh, some of four of the of the people that organised the protest or that part participated in the protest wrote to the IGP and said they would march. The police called them for a meeting. The meeting was convened. They attended the meeting, uh, which I wasn't part of, but I, I know their lawyer, Iron Kiza, was, and the four people were. And they said that meeting turned into a boring lecture of the police telling them how they are young people and all that load of nonsense. And then the, in the meeting, the, there was an opportunity, because they were telling the police, the police asked them, where do you want to march from? And they said, the railway grounds. Where, are you going, where is your destination? To the parliament of Uganda. Do you have a petition? They said, yes. It seems they ticked all the boxes. But I think the police and the state already made up its mind that that match wasn't going to happen. Um, the reasons for that haven't come out clearly. The only clarity, lack of clarity here is the reason the police stopped them from marching, because the police has done that in the past. It could have, it could have been as easy as saying, okay, the day of chosen happens to be a problematic day. Pick another day, we can give you that other day. Then he talks about bombs and all that, bad people taking intention. Bad people can take intention even right now in Kampala. Mm. <laughs> like he said, the bombs that happened uh, two or three years back, they, 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 there was no match. Some, some, some bad elements just came and detonated bombs. The bombs that happened at Jadon Dumasa in 2010, the World Cup, there was no match. So right now, as we talk, um, it's getting to night. The population of Kampala in the night is about how much? Two million, two point something people. Uh, do they, do they, does each of them write to the police and say, come and protect us? No. So the role of the police, the default position of the police and the state, is to protect people. Mm -hmm. If you hear that people are going to march, you, you, at that point in time, they, what they did to invite these people, I think was right to the extent that if they had used that to gain leverage, to, to, re, to start reading from the same page, that you guys want to march, you are marching against corruption, one of the major issues in the problem in the country. We lose, uh, the IDG says, about 10 trillion to corruption annually, out of a budget that is about slightly over 50 trillion shillings. So, at that point, then you agree and, 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 and you, you create synergies and say, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. Then the police's role is to keep out the bad guys, yeah? Not to join these people from the word go. Because, I mean, I can leave this studio right now and a bad guy kills me. So my can tell police that, oh, I'm about to leave the studio, come and protect me. It doesn't work like that. Even if you're living under 100, you're living under 1,000. At any one point in time, the bad guys take advantage of the situation. So that, that for me, I saw was a missed opportunity and anyone saying that it's the reason they couldn't march seems a bit far-fetched. You said the protests, uh, yeah. Um, we have a problem in this country that everything is politicized. And politics is the most growing economic activity. I'm not a lawyer, but I swore to protect and respect the Constitution. I feel cold when counsel says you don't need to. What kind of protest? And you cannot say, this is government. Government also wants to consolidate. In governance, you don't take chances. In politics, they tell us, trust no one, suspect everyone. So for you, you say, this, the other one happened, there was no matching. The advantages are taken. And as government, we cannot just look. These are lives of young people. Now, let me give you an incident. If there was resistance, I actually liked how these young men behave. And they resist. The way the rest do, maybe you pull off a cap of a policeman. He know, shoots this man. You know, kind of there's one problem because he's, he's, he's saying they did the right thing, but then he wants us to discuss the, what they did. No, 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 no. As if that was going to be the case. So I, I contribute in making laws in this country yeah. for you uh, to encourage youth into danger. When no, you no, one, on no, one encourage, no one encouraged you. As a lawyer, youth. I would expect you <laughs> to educate these young people. Can this I? is the law. Yeah. But if I'm saying you, your old police is supposed, you have the, the law is clear, inform, notify police. And if they were in agreement, they would have allowed them to march. President Seven, a couple of months ago, marched because of corruption. There are so many people have been coming. And it's indeed clear, the rules of parliament, they are it's very clear, that whenever you march to the speaker, did you look at their petition? Because it's not there. It's not there. Some of us interested, we try to find out, are these people making up? Though these young men had the zeal, 
and I will tell you I support. So but for you wait, to mingle, just, just, just a minute. to smear something, this oh, evening, people just, that just you have can a question. just go. Oh, no, mm. Who did you ask for the petition? The, some of those people were interacted. I think the other day when we were here. Just a minute. You began by saying we had a lawyer. You couldn't tell the leaders of the protest, right? Yeah, and now yeah. you ask some people. No, there is actually a lawyer because one of the lawyers, Benjamin, is my OB. Benjamin Katana. is my OB. No, you, you, I think you're so, conflating two things. You're talking about new lawyers who I know have only done the work of trying to get those who are arrested out. Mm. They are not the organizers of the protest. Mm. You made a good point. We shouldn't politicize everything in this country. Mm. Which is what you went ahead to start doing, saying that in politics we do ABCD. Which I think is the problem. No, I was talking country. about government. For you, no. government doesn't take advantage. You actually, use, you actually use the word politics, but it's okay. So the problem with this country is that the politicization is only seen by those who do it. Yeah, These young people are marching against corruption, which affects the NRM people, uh, which affects the people in NUP, which affects the people in FDC, and all these other political parties. No, so I this, have uh, one may, I, may I just finish, finish, please? As you finish, I want to place in a request, then I'll be quiet. Now, since we are all at the same cause, can you please go and guide these young people and help them? As members of parliament, we are already waiting for them. We need to listen to them. Let me also give you a request. You see the speaker of parliament? You know her? She was in Luengo. She was in Luengo and she made statements that potentially seem to have been supporting corruption. The same speaker of parliament was in a church and she said that when a Muteso man came before a committee that she was heading as a, as a, as a member of parliament, she said, let us leave this Muteso man. appointments committee. Yeah, whatever it was. It was just a committee of parliament where she was in the previous parliament. Yes, we is. are going to deal with this Muteso man privately because it's our issue as Muteso. Those are very outrageous statements. If you, if you, if I'm going to talk to the, I don't know whom you're sending me to talk to because I don't know the leaders, but you know who the speaker of parliament is. Please go and tell her. In fact, you could move a motion for her, for her censure because come those on. statements. Come on. <laughs> Why are you saying come on? Because you're, you're presiding officer. You're saying that you don't support corruption. You're in a house who's presiding officer confirmed that she couldn't hold accountable a tribesman because they had to handle the issues of public national. The person who was not a Teso chief, the person we're talking about was the head of NEMA, the National Environment Management Authority, which takes charge of the entire country. The person was paid by the government of Uganda. They were appointed by the government of Uganda, serving the government of Uganda. And she said that. Then she goes to Rengo and makes the statement saying that if someone steals but brings back home, in relation to the MPs who were arrested for altering the budget and making this country lose billions of shillings, your work as a member, as a member of parliament I think you would be serious most if you go and ask for her to resign or move a central motion. God, That's how you do pass. Thank you, Godwin and uh, Honorable. But let me first put this question to you, Godwin. Uh, Honorable raised the point of uh, the leadership. Uh, the protests have no leadership that even if they had wanted to engage, they don't know where to start from. Yeah, so, you, you, so th this country has, has boxed everyone into our organizations. Eh? Mm. You don't need organizations to enjoy your right. Yeah? They, they, they push this notion that if you're civil society, you must register, you must do this. You can be a civil society without registering. Mm. You can ma so rights are given to individuals. Mm. I have my rights to life, I have my right to property, and those, those are individual rights. If me and you decide to march together, each of us brings our rights and then we can enjoy them collectively. So that's a good point. Maybe, I don't know who the leader of this protest is, but then the question becomes, why are they saying they don't have a leader? Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's what people like him should interrogate, those, those, those who really want to interest themselves. Now they say that if, if, you, have, if you have demands uh, that must be made and you engage in government or mm. the state, that uh, perhaps there should be rules of engagement, but whom, whom should they engage with? Yeah, you see, at different levels you engage different people. Like I said, mm. four people wrote the petition to parliament, mm. I mean to, to, to the IGP. They engaged them, yeah? Uh, if, if, even if the state is organizing a function, say like the government is organizing a function, different people play different roles. Mm. So you deal with each person as they come to you at that, at that point in time. I also think maybe, sometimes I think, because I'm, I'm not one of the organizers of this protest, sometimes I also think maybe they should have had a leader. But I don't know, I'm not in their shoes. So if they've chosen not to have a leader, maybe it's also a statement that they, they just want to be like that. Again, that shouldn't be the reason to stop their protest because rights are accrued to individuals. Let's take a break. When we return, let's discuss what would uh, your young people, uh, the Gen Z, consider success out of this protest? What would their success out of this protest look like? Should they get any? Big Talk, hosted by Anna Rimugume. On 106.1 Next Radio. Yo, don't turn off the radio. It's official. 106.1 Next Radio. We'll be right back. When MTN called me, I, I, I was feeling very happy. I was excited. 
But later, I was questioning whether it was the true people that were calling me or it was the con men. Later, I reflected on my interaction with the person who called me. I didn't ask me for money. I know con men will definitely ask for some money to prove that you are a winner. I feel very happy. We are very grateful for the offer of paying school fees for my daughter for the second term. My message to all the parents, I encourage them to use the mobile money app for paying school fees. You can pay any money that you have at your own convenience and you keep on tracking the balance. It saves us from a lot of movement, a lot of time. That's why I encourage all parents to use the MTN Momo for paying school fees. Together, we're unstoppable. Hey, business people of Uganda, the Ugandan National Lottery is here for you. It's the perfect opportunity to boost your business. Zimba, your business, by becoming an authorized Ugandan National Lottery agent. By paying a security deposit of just 250,000 shillings, you will receive your very own Ugandan National Lottery terminal, expert training from the pros themselves, and marketing materials to skyrocket your sales. And with a generous 5% commission on every ticket sold, the potential for earnings is limitless. Don't miss out. Act now and call us toll free at 0800 33 44 33 to see if you qualify. Join us today and simba your business. Ituba Uganda is regulated by the National Lotteries and Gaming Regulatory Board. Did you know that mosquitoes spend much more time resting on walls or ceilings than they do hovering in the air? But worry not. Introducing Kincho One Push. With its unique formula, Kincho targets mosquitoes where they rest by sticking particles on walls or ceilings. With 60 shots per bottle, each lasting 12 hours, Kincho One Push effortlessly keeps your space mosquito-free. Back to the hits. Back to the hits. Now. Only on your number one hit music station. 106.1. It's official. <laughs> Next radio. Big Talk, hosted by Kanari Mugume. 106.1 Next Radio. March to Parliament protests is uh, the conversation that we are having this evening in the studios tonight. I'm hosting uh, youth activist and also lawyer Godwin Toko. And I'm um, also hosting Honorable Brandon Chintu, the spokesperson of the um, NRM caucus. Um, what would success for you, Godwin Toko, as a young person, uh, look like out of this protest? Yeah, quite, 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 quite an interesting question. So first, I think that what these young people have done is that they've created a very, very important conversation on corruption uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we seem to have been having in, 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 in corners, yeah, like different people discussing it's now a national issue. This has made headlines. We are really discussing this. I find that to be a very, very big success. And then there is this issue of the intergenerational questions that um, a lot of the young people, well, I'm relatively young. I wouldn't call myself a young person, but from where I sit, I feel like there's a, there's a lot of disconnect between the leaders of this country, who many times tend to be much older in a country where the median age, age is about 16. Uh, so that disconnect always can be problematic. Now the, this conversation is happening. The young people are taking are becoming more and more interested in issues that they should be interested in. I mean, I think you've had this conversation that young people tend to be more interested in parties, they tend to be more interested in, in, the, in the things that um, don't really matter. Now, if young people rise up and start demanding uh, that money in the national budget is spent on education, is spent um, on more serious issues, I feel that is a big success. But concerning the match particularly, I think um, it's good that people who are arrested are being freed at the rate that we had not thought would happen ourselves. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's that question of the bail. Uh, they're getting bail, many of them cash bail. But yes, even the amount still seem more more affordable, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000. That, that's, that's not outrageous as I thought it would be. So I think that we need to just get this out. I feel like it was wrong to arrest them in the first place. But yeah, there's always a chance to rectify a mistake you make. Right. If, if you do something wrong, you can always rectify it. So I feel like the government um, or the state is, is trying that and, and, and they're doing well with that. So I just hope that by the 6th, uh, oh yeah, there was someone who sent to jail, I think will appear on the 19th. Yeah, but by the 19th, I hope that all these guys will be freed and they can go back and enjoy their rights, but also leave us with that question of discussing issues around corruption, mm. intergenerational issues, and then the youth getting more and more interest in national issues. Yeah. Because given that the population of between se below 17 is about 55%, according to the recent stats from this, uh, the, the census, those are the people who should take agency and speak as much as possible and be heard. Yeah, Godwin, you 
have already um, caused a movement online. At least we have more and more young people online. We have that um, evidence in our eyes that they're more interested in, in the running governance and political issues of this country and, and how it's run and the budget processes. And that's how eventually maybe in one way or another this was part of the process that led to these uh, protests. But what I want to ask is that out of these protests, what would you say we have achieved, not the small wins that you've already achieved, like having young people out of jail and, and, and having, you know, government sometimes even respond and, and call out for dialogue. But what I'm asking is, what would success look f out, what would success look like for you out of these protests? Yeah, just, just leaders watching their back, just leaders knowing that the citizens are interested in issues. There is, I think it's Washington Post, which has a, a, a tagline that dark, democracy dies in the darkness. Um, the government is supposed to work for the people, and government is supposed to always take into uh, interest. I mean, take care of the interests of the people. Many times, sometimes the people mislead the government, and, and the government must be cognizant of that. But I feel like all said and done, this is a very, very good thing that people are now concerned. Uh, the Honourable mentioned something that I thought was very, very important, that some of these issues shouldn't be politicized. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing, I think the biggest win for this country with these protests and the young people is that they are nonpartisan. I've seen people who are radically NRIM joining them. I've seen people who are radically noob shaking hands with people who are NRM while calling for better and the end to corruption. Right. So uh, if, we can, if we can keep that as a country, that we agree that you can vote whichever color you want, you can wear red, you can wear blue, you can wear green, whatever you wear, mm. but when it comes to issues like corruption, when it comes to funding for healthcare, when it comes to MPs or the Speaker of Parliament making statements that are ridiculously supporting corruption, whether the MP is NRM, whether the MP is youthful, whether the MP is old, they are concerned about those statements and they take the most immediate step that is before them to ensure that she is held accountable. As the young people are trying to do on the streets, I find that to be something very commendable. I, how, just, I just hope that that carries on. How, how is that success measurable? Yes. So At what point would you say, okay, now we have maybe 50% of the young people in this country now more engaged um, civically than ever. How, how are you going to measure that success? Yeah. The, the, oh, it's just pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah, so, so many times, many times, success comes and you, it, it's not easy to measure on, on issues of this kind. Yeah, because there are so many interesting points, I mean, points of interest. There are so many issues that are moving. It's, it's, it's something very political in nature. Um, if, if in the next few years we see more and more young people, uh, I mean, I, not not necessarily becoming MPs, mm. but picking interest in what happens in Parliament. I don't I, I don't think I'll ever run for MP. I don't want, the time we talk about corruption posts, that, why don't you go to your constituents and run for MP? No, I don't want that. I want to be where I am. But then I think that those who are there should do what's right. Not If, if, if you take your child to school as a teacher, as, as, as a parent, you want the teachers to teach the children well. So if the teachers are not teaching them well, the response that they become that, why don't you become a teacher? No, it becomes that, can the teachers play their role? So I hope that more and more young people in this country Big interest in happenings, and, and it shouldn't just be with, with the parliament. Yeah, he's right on that. Um, there should be more interest in the courts of law. I, as a lawyer, I know the corruption that the courts. There's corruption with, with ministers who potentially are part of the, the cabinet and the executive. So yeah, it should just be interest picking in all these things that you're watching them. At any one point in, uh, in time, you come up and say, "We know that this has happened, and we're trying to hold this accountable." Yeah. Honorable Brian, you, you've heard uh, from, from, from the young people even the conversations happening online. The question is, do you think that government will eventually, this is the question for tonight, heed to the demands of the young protesters? First of all, though they have not formally handed in a petition or formally had a meeting... But you said you identify with their cause. Yeah, that's where I'm coming to. Hmm. But at least their voices are heard. Actually, to me, this is something that raises... It also makes me, at least I am happy, and probably I interested myself to join at a policy level. Mm. So these young men, they have also added a voice. Because currently what happens, corruption is for all of us. It's like poverty. But we don't stop, we add on. So they have sounded out and people have had their leaders. If there would be any chance that these young people can be identified, say, where is your constituency, we would also task our members of parliament, especially those that I am responsible to make sure they reach out to these young men. And I'm looking forward that their voices can formally be heard. So to me, one, I would really love that whoever could be behind, because there should be invisible power behind these young men. 
I saw a very visible uh, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw one day I asked the owner of Samju, what do you support? Said I would support them, but they're invisible. I cannot just go into something. Because by the time they also warned, the activists would have found a way to see who are these people. If they, it's not only selfish uh, interest, because normally these party leaders and people in the leadership, they are doing they do state manage issues, because the election is just near here. They're working for just achieving their positions in their constituency. But lately, like uh, Council said, corruption, not only parliament, we have corruption way back from the, the local government, even in the church. So we need to have this conversation, we need to have a proper discussion, but to the young people, I'm just sounding you a polite love message. Involve the leaders, let police also have directives. You remember Bobby Wine? The first time of his trail, he abused what they agreed on. I don't know what they agreed on, but council says they feel that these guys were just lecturing them. We also have administrators like that. One time I traveled with an elder MP and he saw me doing something and he quickly said, hey, you young man, why would you do this? I told him, come on, I am a married man with two beautiful sons, so I have a right to exercise. So their rights, I could name those that violated, but I also call upon the young people because we are the generation mm. that we should do things in protective. Because if a young man is broken, the arm by these security forces. At the end of the day, it will be you. The, the security forces will, That's what I'm saying. What, that what, if... What are, listen, listen, why council. Is the why is the security forces breaking someone's arm? L listen, council. Security details cannot be discussed as if you're boiling mandas. That's, that's the problem. You know? Oh, 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 yeah, you I sit on the committee of defense. Yep, there are it. even something, like we pass a budget and they will come and say, this is classified. He's a journalist. Oh, is, it, is there a risk that as you're leaving this place, security guys can break your arm? No, 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 no. Why? I'm, 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 so why are they breaking the hands of people exercising their right? Now, that you can ask. I can give you an opportunity. I can ask my chair, because this is a public committee. You can raise, we can give no. you a chance to ask those what questions. What the committee should do is to tell the police not to do that. No, we know yeah? what to do. We know yes. what to do. We have then, rules. Then, then you do When, that. when, no, we cancel. We know what to do when we invite people. So I'm just urging. I'm not going to be... Council, who tells you that in NRM there are people who don't want to change? I would love also to see a new president. I'm not that old. No, by the way, can, so, can I just clarify? I, I don't think this is about changing the president. Yeah? Yeah, but... That, that's, that's one of the things that they, they <laughs> used to derail uh, people's uh, citizens' call for, 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 for fighting against corruption. Right. Yeah? I think most Ugandans agree that President Museveni is the president up to the next election. And I think President Museveni can fight corruption. Yeah? That's what they want to see. They're not saying that President Museveni should stop being president as part of fighting corruption. Maybe after President Museveni there will be less corruption. Maybe. That's a maybe, a big maybe. Maybe there will even be more corruption. But the thing is, is there corruption now? Yes. Can we deal with the corruption now? Whether but it's President Museveni, whether it's corruption in Nook, he said there's corruption in church, whether there's corruption in church, can that corruption be dealt with? I think that's the issue. If that is I the think issue. that was information because I don't feel anything you clarified. But I'm also still standing. No one is not condemning. It's very wrong of Ugandans to think that President Museven doesn't, he cannot fight corruption. Yeah, but it's but evident. Yeah. But also <laughs> fighting corruption is not striking, and then people lose lives, and you, are, I will not attach you, but whoever is organizing is at his home watching TV. These are young men of 21, 23 years. So as you give them a message to protest, fight and some right. people, some people have a thinking that what happened in Kenya can happen here. My brother, yeah. I want to tell you, we should not play with the lives of young people. No, here's you the are thing. explaining this outside. You tell me how carrying pranks is going to change corruption. Here is the this, this so how did, just how did a minute, marching just corruption? a minute, it was organized. Yes, the such corruption. organization. There's actually more corruption since then, right? I don't know. Yes, the figures show that. But now I'll tell you there is government in this country. Yes, there is government. And every government and has government rules. The interest of we, follow, we follow the constitution. It is very wrong for you to urge young people 
to do unnecessary I'm not urging anyone to do the communication. I'm the not communication. Urging anyone to do People are doing audience analysis. I have just explained what I know as a lawyer. So, but don't the justify. Law, the law, what am I justifying? Have I justified killing people? It's just justifying. Yeah, no, no, no. Way. You're justifying saying that the security forces will break people's arms, which I think is. I wrong. was giving an example. So, why are they breaking people's arms? Then that's so the question you can ask. The question them. becomes. I'm not a police no, commander. You said something else that was interesting. That people you're are just going diverting to die. me. No, diverting no you, me. Are. I, 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 I just you are. You are. You said people are going to die because they are fighting corruption. Because really? you guys are encouraging them. I'm not what encouraging the anyone. Why are you striking? What is their reason of striking? Against corruption. Yes. yes. Now you, with your words, mm -hmm. you will encourage young people to go work. No. If they shot as that young lawyer, man, a, why are they shooting him? That, that's not my so question. If I tell you to go and get food in the street, prevention okay. is better than cure. I've seen border border riders who are just riding to work and they get shot. Should we say border border riders? I don't know. Ride? I haven't seen that. I have that. seen people going to work and they get accidents. Should we say pushing them to work? Now, counsel, I'll accident? ask you. What I'm saying is this: Yeah, if if I leave this place right now, yeah, mm -hmm. if I'm leaving this place. And I get shot. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's not because I left this place. It's because some rogue policeman shot me. And we so what you don't say? What you exactly? That's but the, then you already so shot. as a member of that committee in Parliament. Mm. That's okay. That's okay. As a member of that committee, you're talking about in Parliament. What you, you shouldn't talk to the young people. You should say these young people want. And you, you began very well. You said you've you summoned. Um, you said you've yeah, 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 the the yes. committee. Yes, committee someone yeah. Perfect. So when you summon the IG, what are you going to tell him? We know that. We know that. So, what, because we, now, what you're going to tell him is very interesting because at this point now you're saying people can't exercise their right because the, the police may shoot them. The problem is. No, 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 no. Don't, but you now have an experience with lawyers. I went for a petition with one of the senior <laughs> lawyers in this country and they will jangle you. <laughs> <laughs> the way council here is doing. I, I, I swear, I'm not trying to, to jangle you. To, I'm, I just think that you're to saying... Confuse you're you. To confuse is, you. Is isn't, he, isn't he only articulating yes, what exactly. the other young people feel? That's the same thing I'm talking about. Now for council, it is very, very wrong for him to say, why did they shoot? We are not going to determine on the past deeds. No, they are so... No, no, President no, 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 Museven... No, 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 yes, that's what you're insinuating. No, That's what I, I, I am trying to. to I am I am trying to 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 to, to gauge your audience sure. so that I can be able to understand you. Ahead. Just like I cannot start bumping into legal things because I don't understand there. Yeah. Okay. Now, my argument is that the young people they are adding a voice because they belong to Uganda. This is their country. You first have to be Ugandan before any other things. And any sober leader in this country. You don't know how much we felt. Normally, we see protests of these usual people who are here. You say, ah, those are doing politics. But these are young people that ought to have been handled. We are condemning the acts, if you hear most of our members of parliament. And actually, they did it smartly. Because these other usual players, the MPs and the rest of the opposition leaders, we also asked, have they been used? So for me, my issue is, whoever will shoot, Whoever will, 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 will do something to this young person is not going to ask you for a reason. He will not give you. I'm being human. Now forget about your law things. The law says this, protect. Forget about all those human things. How, how and you know how forces how, behave. How, how, how law is this no. Forget about the laws. No, 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 no. When you, because we are treating a crisis now. Which crisis? The war. Crisis. Oh, don't divert me. <laughs> You know, don't yeah, divert me. Because no, we are talking about fighting corruption. There are some you're saying there's a crisis you're treating. Me, I am miss, I'm, I'm sending a message to the young people as a leader. Sure, please, go ahead. So I'm not going to look at the, the dynamics of the law. Police is supposed to keep land. I know that. I know that. And we have been singing it. But how often, how professional do they do that? Because if I was a police officer, I would not handle such a young man. So I'm leaving out the governance. I'm talking about... I'm giving a peace of mind like any other young person that I saw these young souls trying to echo out their voices. We have seen so many revolutions that have been aided by young people. So I'm for, I, I don't want even to listen to those things. Who was that? Why would you shoot? I'm trying to save lives. Since you also want a new president, maybe you would embrace the revolution led by these young people. Yeah, yeah, if they are clear. If they are clear and we know that clear That one I will not answer. Because, what, you can... No, what, you, what, what, what I, I, I can, I can, I can have with you a cup of tea no, and what, then I explain. What, because what, I don't want to... To spend more of Canada because he has a program. I, I, I agree. Yeah. But what you have said is that these people are fighting against corruption. Yes, which yeah. is right. You're but saying how? But you, they're marching. 
They are saying they are saying that they want to march from the And no one is refusing parliament. that. We are no, saying No, they have been refused. They have been arrested, Wait. including people found in basement yes. with placards writing on them. Which basement? Basement of uh, what's that place called? Garden City. Uh -huh. They Oasis were small. There. I don't With know. writing on them. I don't know about that, but I, know, I want. Honorable, you, I want. I want to tell you something. Yes, please. That there is a government, and government no one will doubt that. No one has doubted that. But can a government be wrong? We I mean, cannot I mean, I mean, relax. Honorable, I mean, I mean, not a government, right? Yes. Did it yes. do wrong? Hitler had a government. Did it do wrong? A government yeah, yeah, can be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A government can be used against its own people. So yeah. don't say we have a government. We have a government as if it's a new thing. People have had governments for such we a long are, time. We are yeah? a and new. governments can be wrong. Can the so. thing Gen here is that gentlemen. people are fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please accept that. If you want to join them in fighting corruption, join them. But may I give you a bigger task? The Speaker of Parliament. No, 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 I will not go, I will not go that side. The See, Speaker of Parliament. Choose your side. Either you're with corruption. But I'm not going to you're say with corruption. it here. You're with corruption. Because the Speaker of Parliament is on video saying that the, she, she let a Muteso man go because. I don't know about she that. Did. You can ask the spokesperson of Parliament. Can I, can gentlemen, I Chris or Bolly will answer that. Because I have it on my phone. No, no, no. Gentlemen, all the one in Wengo. She has never denied these things. Okay. But you see, you're just, you're just, you're just playing lip service. Oh, gentlemen, let's take a break. When we return, wait for it. Big Talk, hosted by Tanari Mugume. On 106.1 Next Radio. Yo, don't turn off the radio. It's official. 106.1 Next Radio. We'll be right back. Tuka Brian is my name. Uh, Co-host on NBA Sport this morning. Soccer Lounge and also NBA Press Box. All on NBA Sport. Now I'm here to talk about keeping the environment safe okay, and clean. Like, now many of us would prefer to use the cafe when going for shopping or buying whatever stuff you usually buy for home, or for your children or for whatever. Now I would like to advise you, I think it's much better to keep our environment safe by using paper bags or cloth bags. Those are much safer because when we use the cafe, you throw it around, it could block our drainage, and you know in Kampara what happens when it rains. There's a lot of, block, there's a lot of blockages, and usually that causes a lot of problems in terms of uh, water all over the city. So, that's all good. Brought to you by Nema Kesisie, Eco, Now Breweries, Centenary Bank, Prestige Margarine, Stopping Bank, NBS, National Horse Authority. The partner that helps you do it. Zimba Business with Momo. Get paid by your customers. Get Back to the hits. Back to the hits. Now. Only on your number one hit music station. It's official. Next radio. Big Talk. Hosted by Tanari Mugume. On 106.1 Next Radio. Please do it. 106.1 Next Radio. This is the Big Talk on our last segment of the show. And uh, I'm hosting Godwin Toko, youth activist, but also. Um, lawyer and Honorable Brandon Chintu, who is a spokesperson with the NRM Caucus. Um, he also sits on the Committee of uh, Defense. Uh, gentlemen, way forward. I just want to talk about two things. One, um, there is, of course, uh, the President's message uh, that he did put out in a tweet talking about foreign funding. Uh, Goodwin, do you want to respond to that? Or is the President trying to use that as an excuse um, to, to quell the protests? No, I, and, and also you could give your way forward. I don't know. I don't know where the president got that from. Um, I know that um, for the people that have been marching, I don't think any of them received any form of foreign funding. Yeah, organize money moves from where money money follows the rules of osmosis. It moves from a point of high concentration normally to a point of low concentration. So what happens is that this country gets a lot of money from countries where there's money. So. A lot of the money that this government spends is loans and grants from rich countries, uh, whether you're talking of China, whether you're talking of uh, institutions like the IMF, World Bank, um, Eurobond, whichever it be, they give this government money. Those same people also give NGOs money. 
many times the money is given to fund particular activities, say like um, championing democracy, maybe educating people, maybe getting people safe water, safe and clean water. So um, I don't know where the president got that from. He wasn't, he wasn't detailed. I don't know. I read the tweet, but it wasn't detailed. He just said that they, they were planning very, very bad things, which he didn't clarify further what the very, very bad things are. Then he said uh, they're probably getting money from, from the, these things have foreign interests in them. He didn't clarify on that further. So we can, we can just speculate. But from what I know, and I have interacted with uh, the protests because I have been get to, 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 to courts where people were, 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 were arrested, were kept. I've talked with people at police stations. I've done that for the last maybe like a week or so. And I, I, I didn't see any of them to have the signs of money. It's hard to hide money. When people have money, you know how money behaves. They, they begin to show the signs of having money. That is one. But the other thing is, I think there is a problem in this country that each time people seem to talk about their realities, I think most people in Uganda, the, 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 the ruling class in Uganda, like in most African countries, mm. seem to suggest that Africans don't think. That if they're, if they're ever talking for themselves, then someone is telling them to talk. Yeah, which, 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 which I find quite problematic. Because similar protests are happening in Kenya. Uh, President Ruto had issues with Ford Foundation in Kenya, which is not even in Uganda. Similar protests are being planned in Nigeria. I think against the economic, the, the equivalent of, of, of the of fear, the, 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 the Financial Intelligence Authority. Mm. Uh, it's more powerful in Nigeria because of the cyber crime. Now, the, the president of Nigeria, Tinubu, has said that they are being for funded by foreigners. There are similar protests planned in Egypt, and the president of Egypt is saying that they are being funded by foreigners. But let's cut that. Let's say they are funded by foreigners. The question is, are the concerns of these people legitimate? Yes. The Speaker of Parliament, uh, and, and a lot of people in Parliament, uh, 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 there's been a lot of evidence that there's been gross levels of corruption, egregious levels of corruption supported by parliament. Even the president says it, that I know parliament is corrupt. These guys have been offering budget, uh, budgets to build mega mansions, to build apartments and all that. Now, the MPs in parliament have left this country down. They have continued as if it is business as usual, except a few, the likes of Sechikubo, the likes of Odur Jonathan, the likes of uh, Namuga, I think, who, Goretti, who stand up every now and then to remind the country that we can't continue like this. Corruption is bad. Now, for the young people who cannot go to the floor of parliament to impeach the speaker, which is what Honorable is failing to do, mm. which I think if, if he did, he would build fame a monument and say he's the most serious MP that we've ever had, because that's what we need right now, but he has failed to do. Now, for the young people who cannot go to the floor of parliament to do that extraordinary step, for them they're simply saying, can we march to show our disgust? Can we march to protest against corruption? Which corruption means, among other, other things, can I, just, just for context, the government of Uganda spends 20,000 shillings as capitation grant on a kid in UPE, UPE schools. There are leaders in this country who altered the budget of the Uganda Human Rights Commission and they are going to take as much as 130 something billion shillings. Now, in a country where the government can only find 20,000 shillings to pay for a child in UPE for three terms, their MPs were enriching themselves to that extent. In a country where 16 mothers die every day in hospitals because there is no electricity. Where I come from in West Nile, many times people operated on torches at the mercy of, of the medical personnel. Yeah? But these people in parliament, some of them, not all of them, of course, they are good, they are good apples there, are living the largest lives. Their kids are studying abroad, they are building apartments all over the place, and all that, at the expense of these poor taxpayers. You, you, could, you would think that there are people who have, been, who, are, who have come from maybe London to come and colonize us and lead us, because they seem so detached from the realities of this country. So for me, I think the MPs in this country, all these people in duty, of taking, of being very proactive and acting against the gross levels of corruption that is happening in Parliament, perpetuated many times, we are told, by the leadership of that House. Honorable Brandon Chintu, I was just, foreign funding. I was just listening to the blackmail, but that's politics here in Uganda. Where is the blackmail here, Honorable? Yeah, you've just had council concluding that kids. Maybe I want to inform you that some this I'm just three years in Parliament. And my kids have been going to big schools. In, in London? Ah, yeah, oh, yeah. It depends on the background of someone. Yes, they really? study, they go for summer school. Oh, and oh, yeah. There is no summer school. Did, no, no, no. Wait, Council what, gave you... Did you steal the money? Go. Because I talked to those who stole the money. Go. If you didn't steal the money, you're good to go. Council. Yeah. Mm. So for me, my... You asked a question, but you dodged it also. Actually, I think I should know where Council comes from. We start mobilizing because we need such brains. No, I don't want to go to If you me. would come and then, I would I interest you. Me. I would interest you. Civil society organizations do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I have worked in civil society for closely 20 years. I know the challenges. I think when God back, I just started working uh, with a code. Code day, those programs, we were one of the first employees here because I understood even the joining agents by then. Government, it's true, that has a bias. 
And I don't know where that feeling comes, criticizing. And yet, civil society organizations give us an agenda. You know we are still struggling with the marriage bill. UOPA has been evolving in you, you and women and so many organizations here. So what I would encourage, the good words that council here is speaking, instead of coming to lament on the microphone, he would engage us. I want to challenge council here. I have a forum for men in that parliament, and I'm the chair, so that we invite council here, because he cannot have a chance to speak that on the floor. And even that question, the, the request, or the please making, you can suggest it there. Honourable. That why don't you bring a resolution for the Speaker of Parliament to resign? Why, we shall why, listen to why, why you. Why is this the Foreign funding. So, that's why I was coming. But I needed to somehow build up because there's a lot of blackmail. And I hate it. Sometimes I fear to, be, to introduce myself as a member of Parliament mm -hmm. with what is happening in that circle. How sad. Now, the foreign, mm -hmm. of course, there is no doubt these organizations, they do get funding. Whatever they get, or like they cannot be compiled, or like the, the, the political parties, they do get funding, they don't get the same even Gemma gets. I'm not going to be on the microphone to justify that it is the foreign influence because I have no idea about that. But you have interested me. I know where I can find out. I can go to the Foreign Affairs Ministry so that the next time we can. Because for me, I don't speak baseless. I have no evidence that they get, I've not checked their bank accounts. But like any other, council is telling you that it's kind of a problem within the African countries. Maybe those guys also get interested because they help us. Sometimes they can come and get off the, the government to help the people of Uganda. They have done it in several countries. So whether they get foreign aid and there is foreign influence, I know it has also been always. There is a time they closed all the NGOs, you remember? They stopped, they deregistered them. And we came up saying, no, this is wrong, because civil society really helps us. Civil society does a lot. And since government does not facilitate them, they have workers. You cannot work for voluntary. So, f yes, they do get, like Netherlands, the embassy has programs in governance and democracy. You not go and start telling them, we want to go and open farms. Though there, there is that sector that can do that. But if you go, Netherlands, I think Belgium also, about six embassies. They have those, those programs. It's governance. If they would squeeze further, you would say maybe women, empowerment and the rest of the thing. So we may be want to interact with these people that receive the donation, since you are an investigative journalist. Because if I go as a politician and as a spokesperson of the caucus, they will say, what are you looking for? So I cannot cut, cut, go to and speak on that and say, yes, uh, the foreign donation is real. Because I don't think, I worked with grants. They are never, they are conditioned grants. They tell you this is specifically for education. There are some grants, the way budget here is, you pass a budget when there are others that are not mentioned. So I don't think those people who aid them can condition or can really have intentions of destabilizing the country. Right. Goodwin, way forward. Yeah, thank you, Honorable, for, for, the, for, for this program. I think the way forward is that we need uh, honorables like him and uh, the gov people in charge of affairs of this country to do the work that is done by saying that he took an oath, which was a very, very powerful statement he made, uh, to ensure that uh, people are served to the best possible ability. This, this country can never serve us, like maybe like say the Netherlands or the US. Mm -hmm. We have a very limited resource envelope. But if you have that limited resource envelope, can we use it optimally to benefit the masses of this country? It's, it's very disheartening that you can go to a place as, as near as Luero and people are drawing water from the most dirty places. That's just a few kilometers from the city center or from the parliament and state house and all these institutions. So I think what we need is um, leaders that can have this conversation, even internally. Go back and reflect and say, we are living this kind of life in this country. You know, there's that researcher that says when people, when everyone is poor, you're likely to live peacefully. When everyone is rich, you're likely to live peacefully. But when there are ultra-rich people and ultra-poor people, that is where the problem comes. That disconnect. The wider it is, the bigger the problem becomes. So I think that's the, the thing that we need. And I, I, be, I beseech Honorable and maybe other people listening in who have positions of leadership, let's have that conversation. Let's reflect and see how we can move this country forward. Like I said, it's the only country we have. Thank you. And your message to the young people? The young people of Uganda, may God bless you. May God um, find a way to help you. May you live in a better country than the one you found. <laughs> what about way forward? Uh, the way forward, actually, 
Tanz has put it right. We need, I want to echo you younger men that we are here with you. We are in this together. But you know when you know something, prevention is better than cure. I don't want these young lives to be endangered. Some other question you will ask when you are somewhere, which we don't want. So we urge them. We are there, I'm NRM, but I also have my head, and it's quite independent. We can come and listen to you or come to us. We can even actually come wherever you are. We have a forum for the younger members of parliament, and we are so sudden. We shall listen to you, and then all like council say, this is our country. This is our country, we all own it, so let us do things that can help and also develop, because we are the biggest population in this country. Yeah. But young men, we love you, and we are in support with your concerns. Yeah. But, but, but as parliament, what have you done? You've seen the, the outburst, the, uh, we, the anger. We have quickly engaged the youth MPs. We have quickly involved the youth uh, forum in parliament. We have summoned also had discussions the youth council so we shall get there i may not um in full terms explain how far they have gone but we have had that meeting and we wait for a report but we also now you remind me that these youth leaders from all your levels let us come out and support because this is our generation i don't think there's anyone who has a program of dying tomorrow but we should protect them so that way forward as parliament you know we have been on recess when all this happened, we had just called Parliament didn't even sit and it was called off. But I know these issues will be raised on the floor and we shall demand an answer. Actually, your colleagues in Parliament have been saying that the Speaker is uh, not giving them an opportunity to discuss the current problem. Yeah, but how? Do you feel the same way? No, 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 because we're on a recess. Parliament hasn't resumed. Yeah, the other time they... Recess. L no, last, no, no, no. You know, time you're in recess, Parliament was called you, you called, and we did not even sit, they called it off. Such and issues. then there was a special sitting. Now, no, but that was for, so. This for, does not that look like an was emergency. Specific. That sitting it was very specific, and you know. And then the other this thing. This does not look like an emergency for I, you as I'm parliament. Not, I'm not in charge of managing the order paper. Mm -hmm. So you are asking a very wrong person. The order paper's management of the speaker and the clerk. So you can ask them those questions. Yes, but, but I'm telling you, in I remember the sitting. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that a report. And the Minister of Youth and Children will read the report and I, we shall debate it. I remember when the Honorable Theodore Sechku wanted his motion signed. Yes. He went to a press conference and addressed it and, and, and appealed to the Speaker to call for a special sitting to have members of Parliament sign and debate it. Their procedures went to call a special session. You must follow that. And then that's upon this, the presiding office of the House. So I'm not going because the rules provide so a lot of past the speaker. When, so I'm not when, going to answer for the speaker when, why why it was not brought hmm. because when, when, the paper when, the the bill, when the president when the president returned the bill when the president returned the bill for the budget in parliament, plenary even sat at ten AM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some special sittings that we can actually start at ten and ten in the night. So clearly this but was not all an that canary you are asking a wrong person. Go and interview the clerk of parliament and the speaker. They are the yeah. managers of the order paper. You, you're, you're ceding too much power. No, you're but, member of parliament. You no, 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 but that's not my part to decide what should Please, be discussed it, 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 or not. Honorable Sechikubo pushed this motion, his motion to send Now you are mixing here. Things. No, what I'm saying is, you, you also do I, something. I don't want to. You can move a motion to such a speaker. You can do something. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Hard. Why Boss, that's not, I am hard every day. <laughs> I'm hard every day. Every day I'm hard in this country. Okay, good but luck. But everyone has. In Urusoga, we have a saying that even that one who keeps quiet when the mother is dead doesn't mean he or she is not mourning. So, but we have different ways. Wow. So you're mourning. You're mourning there, everything. There is but different way of operation. Okay. Okay. Silence. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation to appear here with us on the Big Talk. Big Talk returns tomorrow seven to eight. Time check. It's 8 p.m. Brought to you by Absident. Every smile matters. Big Talk. Hosted by Kanari Mugume. On 106.1 Next Radio.